Hi, everybody. I think I'm live. I think I'm good. Okay. So, hello. Happy Wednesday for real this time. Um, I think I said Wednesday yesterday. I don't know what days are anymore, but I do know that today is actually Earth Day. So thank you for joining me on Earth Day today to make a really cool activity. Of course, for those of you who aren't aware, today I have not one, but two different masks that I will be showing you how to make today. One is a mask that you can make with entirely just one cereal box. And the other mask is made out of folded paper. So both of these masks are super easy of the two. The folded paper mask is a little bit easier than the cereal box mask. I will go over both of them. So we have a super fun filled uh, Wednesday puppet making workshop for today. I'm going to start over here. I'm going to move over here. For those who don't know me, my name is Abby. I am a museum assistant. I am a tour guide and I am a workshop leader at the Ballard Institute and Museum of Puppetry. I love giving tours. I love doing workshops and I love getting to do workshops from my apartment and show you uh, crafts that I've made up. So really fun day for me. I also wanted to share a little bit of fun information just about the uh, puppet arts program and Earth Day in general. Um, my friend Tracy this morning, who you might recognize from other workshops here, told me a fun fact. I know both of these facts separate, but I put two and two together. <laughs> the first of those facts is that Earth Day is actually 50. We've been celebrating Earth Day for 50 years. Woo! started celebrating Earth Day for the very first time in 1970, which is a pretty big deal. My fun fact is that we uh, established the puppet arts program at UConn in 1965, which means that the puppet arts program is five years older than Earth Day. I did not know that. I knew both of those facts separately. Tracy connected the dots for me this morning, and I thought it was fun enough to share with everybody. Hopefully at this point, <laughs> now we're ready for some crafts. So let's dive in. I'm gonna start first with our folded paper mask. For our folded paper mask, I'll go over some of the things you're going to need. So let's start with either cardboard or a heavier paper like cardstock. Um, manila envelopes work really well if you have those. I have cardstock here, just a thicker paper. You can absolutely use um, cardboard for this. I have a cardboard box that I've deconstructed. Um, cardboard, though, you have to just use a little bit more force when you are cutting it apart probably need a box cutter or an X-Acto knife. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use the cardstock so that I can use scissors to cut that. You will also need, if you want to make a pattern, um, I find it helpful in my own crafts to make a pattern first with like scrap paper. Uh, for time's sake, because I have two of these to go through today, I will probably not make a pattern. We will dive in together. Um, for pattern making, tape is also really useful and even just making the puppet tape is very useful um glue which is good to go scissors of course a hole punch will help with the sides of the mask and let's see we've got our string or elastic so i am using some elastic string a little bit of both <laughs> i find it works really well with the mask so you can wear it um, and anything you want to decorate it. So I have watercolors here. I will probably not go into decorating my mask too elaborately, but I will show you what to be doing. So I think maybe everybody has made, maybe not, a paper plate mask. A paper plate mask is fun, easy. This is not a paper plate mask. A paper plate mask is typically like a flat thing that goes on your face. Um, the problem with that is that we are three dimensional creatures. So a flat thing on our face usually hits your nose. Let's cut out a hole for our nose, you know, things like that. But I think it's more interesting to create a three dimensional form. And I don't know, folding paper seems to work really well with that. Um, at UConn, actually in the puppet arts program, there is a art form called paper sculpture. That's using one flat piece of paper to create a three dimensional shape. This is not paper sculpture. Um, I'm not teaching you paper sculpture right now. I'm sort of teaching you um, kind of like a little bit of patterning, a little bit of patterning. If you've done like clothing or plushes before, if you made like stuffed animals, um, these are sort of some of the same uh, themes, some of the same techniques, but used on paper. 
So if you can see up close, I've used paper, I've attached paper to itself. And by that, we can actually create like a three-dimensional form out of a flat thing. So disclaimer, this is not officially paper sculpture. This is sort of just holding paper. Let's play. <laughs> okay. So a lot of this you're going to find out is sort of trial and error, which is where having scrap paper and being able to make a pattern comes into play. But I sort of know what I'm doing, so I'm going to walk you through how I'm doing this. Um, if we have a flat piece of paper, our first step that I would think is cutting one slit in the middle here and one slit in the middle here. So this is where if you have hot glue, if you want to just dive right into it, and I'm still waiting for my hot glue gun to heat up, I might have to go check on it in a moment. So if I disappear, I'll let you know. But because it is not hot yet. But otherwise, tape. I think using tape to sort of like feel out what shape you want to make and then later attaching it with either hot glue or glue of your choice or staples works really well. So let's use tape for them. So I've just cut a slit up here. I cut a slit down there. They're both about what inch and a half. Not too bad. Of course, cutting a longer slip, a slit down it will create a sharper shape. But I think a cute little one up here, I can fold it. I can use tape to fasten it. And already you can sort of see how this is becoming now a round shape. So we've taken out a little dart is what it would be called in fabric. You were putting a dart into an article of clothing. Not really sure what you want to call it in paper, but see, we've already just by making two cuts and by taping them together, you've got a round form. And I usually take it to the next step by cutting another one here and another one here. And let's do that on the other side. Well, let's first, I'll show you what this looks like and you can decide from there. So I'm making a mask, but I'm not terribly sure what it's going to be yet. If you have an idea for a mask, obviously your shape might look a little bit different than mine. So I'm just sort of trying to follow the basic. I made a snow leopard over here. She's kind of a fun colored snow leopard. And she's using all of these same cuts, which you can see a little bit more clearly in here. There's one in the center and there's one on each side. And that makes this nice round mask shape. Um, maybe you're doing something different. That's okay too. But experiment and see um, what sort of shapes are making what for you. Like I said, this is when scrap paper would come in handy. So just by doing that, I already have an awesome shape like this. I think I probably will do it on the other side too, just for this process's sake. If that didn't satisfy you and you would like an even rounder shape, you can do even more cuts and you can continue to fold in like I've been doing, folding and taping or folding and attaching. There we go. There's another one. And there's another one. I think you can do as many as you'd like. At this point, though, I really like what I have. You know, hey, it fits my face pretty nicely. Um, so we can dive into next what kind of thing we want to make. So I'll show you a way that I like to do animal ears. They're sort of, I'll say, like mammal looking ears like this. Um, and that's another way that's using this paper sculpture not paper sculpture, paper folding. Paper sculpture technically is a is an art form that was developed by Bart Rock, Burton, who's the head of the part, Puppet Arts Program, teaches it, said it was developed by puppeteer Albert Roser. It is using a series of cones and cylinders made out of paper to create shapes. So this is not technically that. I have two shapes. I've sort of cut vaguely ear things. I think I'm going to go with a pointed ear this time. I have an ear shape. I can cut a little slit at the bottom here. Super easy. And once again, this is maybe only an inch up. And if I do the same exact thing I did on the head where I fold it, it actually creates a really nice little ear. So just showing you how you can turn a two-dimensional thing into a three-dimensional thing. Taped it. Use tape for this one just to be easier, and then when we move to the other one, we can use hot glue. Still waiting for my hot glue gun to set up though. So, at the end of the day, my hot glue gun does not set up. I have some 
regular white glue over there we can use. It doesn't matter either or. Hot glue works just as well as the other stuff. Hot glue is just really fast. It goes pretty fast. All right. So I want to decide where I put my mask, my ear on my mask. Maybe like a lower ear like this this time. Yeah, I don't think that looks good. So it's pretty easy to take just simple flat things and with a single cut, we've already created something that's pretty uh, three-dimensional there. So I'm pretty excited with that result so far. Um, at this point, we probably should start thinking about eyes. I think that's a good idea to think about eyes. Um, because of the roundness of this, this actually kind of already works with my nose. I sort of fit nicely in there. Um, on my snow leopard that I made, you'll notice I actually cut out a hole where my nose would go. And I sort of hidden it with another piece of paper. So it looks a bit sculptural, but it really is serving the purpose of creating a nice hole for my nose to go into comfortably. So maybe we'll do that on this one too. Um, I think with this mask as well, thinking about things like obviously you should have eye holes, you should be able to see. Having a place for your nose to sit happy and having some sort of mouth hole for you to breathe out of. In this one, I've turned it into an open mouth. But depending on your mask, maybe your eyes, maybe you actually see out of the nostrils, maybe you actually see out of something different. This one's pretty straightforward. I see out of the eyes, my nose goes on the nose, my mouth goes on the mouth. But maybe whatever your mask is, maybe your parts don't line up with its parts. Maybe your eyes are here and its eyes are up here. So think about what kind of character you're creating. And these are really easy because they pretty much only take paper or cardboard. If you're gonna start with cardboard though, I would recommend doing a paper pattern like this. And I'll even show you how to cut this mask and make a pattern from it in a bit. So that if you were going to turn this into a cardboard creation, you could do that quite easily. So at this point, I am going, or I'm taping, I'm going here. I'm going one more ear on. And with tape, it's really easy to tape it down and realize, oh no, I made it crooked. You can retape it. And that's nice. I'm sort of getting like a javelina vibe from this, so it might end up being a javelina, but at the end of the day, um, I think my masks end up not really being any animal. They end up being sort of like a mix of animals or a mix of colors and patterns. So I'm getting sort of a vibe of that, or like a cow, because it's sort of like cow shaped right now too. So maybe we can go with a cow or a javelina. I'm going to add some more things and see where, see where the journey takes me, which is not normally how I make puppets. Normally, I have a plan and I stick to it. Through my Ballard uh, workshops, I tend to be very, whatever, see which way I feel like. <laughs> so no matter your style, um, I think we can make it work. So I've got this. I want to figure out where my eyes are going to go. Having a marker is helpful. You can do the trick of putting the mask on your face, sort of like using your fingers to lightly push where your eyes are, not push into your eyes, but to sort of point, like my eyes are right here. I take it off of myself. And then I can use either scissors or I can use an X-Acto blade. So I have an X-Acto blade here just because I have one for other projects. Um, of course, this is a blade. This is a little knife. So it's not the safest between this and scissors. If you feel comfortable using one of these, absolutely do that. If you feel more comfortable using scissors, that's okay too. Um, for scissors, you can sort of like fold a little bit, like you can push with your fingers and it makes a little crease. But if you cut a slit there, now I can sort of take my finger out here and I can cut around my shape. That's a way you could do it with scissors if you don't really want to, but if I one of these might actively, I would just do that easy. So I'm cutting out eye holes. Like I said, pointing, putting your eye holes on the mask don't necessarily mean that that's where your eyes have to be. But for me, that's where my eyes are going to be, um, just with the character that I'm making. Kathy says cow, so I think I will go with the cow. 
I think that's a good idea. Um, at this point, this mask is basically done. We're basically getting to like the done zone. Um, there's a few more things that you can and could do, and I'll go over what those are. Um, cutting that. And of course, make sure you try this on the whole time. These are not terribly even, but they are even here, but the shapes aren't even. Um, if you are really into symmetry, some people are. I usually am. Stepped on these ones, I like to go sort of a fun path. But if you're really into symmetry, you could cut one eye, save the piece of that eye, put it on here and trace it, and then cut out the exact same thing so that you have two symmetrical eyes. These ones are more symmetrical because I did that on that. But I also had a lot of time to play with this one. Um, and a lot of time to play with this one. So now we've done this. Um, we can sort of look at this character. And I'm realizing as I'm wearing this beautiful mask that my cow probably should have, like this looks like the nose of the cow, right? Like these are two nostrils. So this is where I'm gonna distort my own face a little bit. Yeah, exactly. I think that it's fun to start with sort of a base and go from there. So if I'm looking at this mask next to me, where I want her nostrils to be is where I actually want my mouth hole to be, where I want the hole for my mouth to be able to breathe. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm putting the mask on. I'm sort of like figuring out, can you hear me with the mask? Sort of figuring out where I want to go. I'm going to use the exacto blade this time so it's nice and fast. So I'm looking, I think for the other one when I'm really working with my hand, I'm going to angle my computer down so that you can see a little bit better and so we're cutting I ripped one a little bit but that's okay I can breathe yay I kind of want them a little bit bigger let's use scissors to make them a little bit bigger once you have like the, the main holes poked it's easy to just get a pair of scissors right in there Nice big nostrils. Um, in a moment here, I'll actually show you a mask that I've made um, in my own life outside of this workshop, one that I probably would not recommend or would, would say that it might be a little bit more difficult for anybody to just pick up and make, but I'll show you a mask I've made because um, I think it shows how to address sort of these holes. Um, in a mask like this, you can obviously see my eyes through the mask. And it sort of plays into the character, like my eyes are the character's eyes. Um, due to the shadow, they're a little bit darker. So you kind of see this maybe as my eye if you were looking at light, or you'd see it as like a dark spot. Same with the nostril. But if you were really concerned with not wanting to be able to see in, there are definitely ways to fix that. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. But I want to finish up this one first. So before I move on to the decor stage, I think I'm going to add a few more things. Um, you get this on both sides due to the fact that we've been holding it. I say nipping and tucking it. We've sort of been like nipping and tucking and doing these little uh, darts in our paper. So due to that, we have this hole in the bottom here and on the top. On my leopard, I didn't do it as sharp. So you can see that it's a nice like, I don't know, uh, like a more gentle circle. This is a tight hole. So let's put something in there because I don't want there to be a hole on the top of the head. I want there to be this one. So I'm grabbing a piece of scrap paper. And I'm just cutting out sort of a circle shape. I'm gonna cut it in half. If you're making a mask along with me, I'm very, I'll be very excited to see it. Please share with me. Um, I love, even if it's not my workshop, I always look and see what other people have posted um, comment-wise. The last one, the uh, sock puppet. I love seeing my little sock puppets. It was so much fun. It inspired me to want to make my own sock puppet, too. So. I think this is so cute. Um, 
let's say I wanted to add something else onto this and then I probably would move on to the decoration stage. So this cow looks great. Um, on my leopard, I added a nose that's just a flat piece that I glued to the top and I used triangles. So if you can go back to like basic geometry, basic shapes, we're sort of using like very basic shapes to create things on here. So I've got triangles, kind of a triangular, sort of triangular prism. I'm sorry, I should have known that before I thought to say it. But we're sort of using these basic geometric shapes. So if you were looking to do a nose, you could do something similar, put one piece and then fill in the sides with whatever uh, you wanted the profile to look like. You could also do this sort of dark again to create a different thing. So for example, if I thought that because this is my cow's nose and it might be funny if I had like a little bottom jaw here, maybe I take that piece of scrap paper that I had and maybe I sort of like, hmm, I'm imagining cutting this here and holding it there like this and using tape. Who has the power to use tape? My hot glue gun is finally heated up. We're ready to go for the next craft. So I can sort of do this. Maybe I want to make it tighter again. So see, I'm actually only doing this with one side and let's see what shape it makes. You will start to do this and you will start to want to experiment with lots of flat patterning. Um, I would love to be able to teach maybe a powering workshop sometime, talk about how you can turn flat things into 3D things, because I think it's the hardest thing for me to wrap my head around sometimes is how to get a flat thing into a 3D thing. But look, you're doing that right now. So if you've never made a flat thing 3D, you're doing that right now. So pat yourself on the back this Earth Day for doing something new. One more. Look, we just made a bottom jaw. How cute is that? And I realized that's a little bit big. Let's make it a little bit smaller just by cutting this off. And just like that, we have a bottom jaw. If I was really, really, really committed to this, I would go into my craft room and I would get a piece of red felt and I would give her a big tongue. Because I think if you're making an animal puppet, you got to give it a tongue. But I think I have to let myself just finish this one up and move on to the next because the cereal box one is a little bit more complicated. Um, so I'm just gonna put a tape here and I'm gonna put a tape here and I'm gonna put my jaw sort of fasten it here and then I'm gonna go, no, not there. And then I'm gonna go, yeah, right there. How cute is that? We just made that in 20 minutes. Um, of course, I think I talked about with my other, uh, with my rod puppet workshop, a texture that I really like to do is to use a little rectangle and cut little tiny strips like this, sort of fringes on paper. And then I like to curl them or ruffle them up. And so that they're not so whatever. If you do this, this makes really good hair tuft for your puppet, a little beard for your puppet. Could also be if you cut it to the right side, which it just did. We can use a little bit of hot glue and we can give our cow some eyelashes. I know, it's a pretty exciting day when I can give an animal eyelashes. And I can curl them, do her beauty regime. Oh yeah. I tend to always give my puppets beautiful eyelashes so that we all are glamorous together. Um, putting one more spot of hot glue. Oh, I love it. I think this is just spectacular. I'm ready to take this into the next stage, which is making it wearable. I've got my hole punch. I think I've used a hole punch in every one of my crafts so far. 
Um, we're going to use hole punch on this one. I'm going to punch a hole on each side, and then I'm going to use my elastic string to create a band to go around my head. In my own masks, I found that it works best if the strap sort of goes around parallel to your own eyes. So it kind of goes around this way. I found that if it's too high, it doesn't really go down far enough to sit comfortably on your head. And if it goes too low, it kind of gets stuck in this area on your neck and then it sort of falls forward. So I found that for me personally, poking holes sort of here next to the eyes makes it nice and easy for me. I'm gonna get my elastic string ready. You can sort of place it around your head like this and sort of cut a little bit more than you think you need. But, so, nice and thin. I have to hide this when I'm done. My cat loves to play with this. And I thread it through the hole. And I tie it. Um, if you don't have elastic string, if you're just using regular string, I'd recommend tying one side putting it on, sort of making it, seeing where it fits on the other side, maybe realizing, oh, that's perfect right there, or, oh, it needs to be over here. If you're using elastic like I am, it's not too big of a deal because elastic stretches. So I'm threading it through one more time. I, once again, cannot wait to see everybody else's masks if you're building along with me. If you're building along with me today on Earth Day, happy Earth Day. If you're building along with me sometime in the future, happy, happy day. <laughs> happy day. I still can't wait to see what you made. Find the Ballard Facebook page and please post it there. I'll continue to look on and I just love seeing other people's art. I love to share these crafts. They are super simple. I love to do things with things that I already have lying around. Like I had a stack of this paper. Um, if you used cardstock like I did, we have some, I've got some watercolor paints. A little pinkish. I don't have the time to watercolor this whole thing, but I think that it would help me to feel like I've created something perfect if I give her just a little pink nose and I'm just watercolors work super well on this as long as you don't put too much water on see a little bit hard to see but you can do whatever you want for that and checking in on comments make sure I didn't miss anybody Yes, make one today. I cannot wait to see. If you make a cow, we can have a whole herd. If you make a different animal, it's okay too. <laughs> it doesn't have to be an animal too. Um, I think around the puppet arts program, I sort of have the reputation of the person that makes all of the puppets that just are animals. I don't really make human puppets. I think it's just a preference. I just really like animals. So you can see how easy it is to just take some watercolor. Sharpie would work really well too. Crayons, regular markers, whatever you've got. I wanna finish this so bad, but I can't. I wanna move on to the next thing too. So let's move some stuff to the side and let's embark upon the next uh, challenge here is the cereal box mask. Yeah, dry brush works well too. Um, I did want to show off to maybe this like middle section is a good idea. Um, I really like mask making. I did want to show off a mask that I've made. Um, it does look like a skeleton. I'm sorry to scare anybody. So this is a mask I've made. Um, I'm really only showing it off just so that you know that I have mask credentials. I love masks. Um, so this is a plastic mask that I made. I sculpted it in oil clay. I cast it in plastic from a mold that I made with rubber. And it has a top and a bottom, so she has a doll. So I like masks. I like to make masks. Um, but I wish I could teach you a mold making class. I have taught mold making in the past. I wish I could teach you mold making. Um, but it's a little tough because not everybody has plastic lying around and silicone lying around that they can just 
yeah, dive in. So I tried to think about what are some things that everybody has. Um, I also am, of course, an artist. And sometimes as an artist, I like to give myself little art challenges just to mix it up, right? Um, so I like to think that, hmm, what could I do to sort of challenge myself? And so for this, I decided to challenge myself and make a mask with just one cereal box. I know. And glue. Don't forget glue or tape or something to fasten it with. So the only thing that is not a cereal box on this besides glue is that I used a different box. I got a package in the mail and I decided to use the white cardboard to create big eyelashes. I thought it helped them pop. Um, so I'm going to show you how to walk through. Yesterday, somebody complimented me on my cereal choice. Oh yeah. <laughs> we have to eat well here, right? <laughs> so you can see the pretty pebble texture on this. I, I love using product boxes to create other art and sort of seeing what the original life of this was. So we're going to take this Reese's Puff box and we're going to turn it into a mask, sort of like this one. Um, you can see on this mask that I've used a lot of little uh, triangles that I cut to sort of create feathers. I love textured art. I love different textures. So on mine, I'm going to do another textured. I wasn't sure what I was going to make. I had a class yesterday and I said, hey, I'm teaching tomorrow. What animal do you want me to make? And they all said, ooh, you should pick a, an endangered one for Earth Day. And I said, what endangered animal? <laughs> There's a few. They said, do a pangolin, which looks like a scaly anteater. And I thought, sure. I've never made one of those in my life. I would love to do one of those. So I'm going to make a pangolin today or a scaly anteater, a friendly little mammal that has armored plates all around him. Um, this doesn't have to be just a cereal box. Any product box, if you're buying crackers or cereal or pasta, this sort of thin cardboard I found is so incredibly useful for any craft project you could start. So even though we have nice heavy cardboard here and this could make a beautifully textured mask, I would love to use this stuff because you can cut it really easily with scissors. Um, I, I said I really enjoy the bright colors of the packaging as well. Um, but yeah, you could use any product you want. This was almost like a, I think this was almost a Ritz Crackers box. I almost did a Ritz, Ritz mask, but settled on the Reese's Pieces, Reese's Puffs. Quarantine has made me not know what words are. It's okay. So I'm starting just by opening up my box. I'm cutting along the side. Oh yeah. So I've cut it open here. Um, I'm going to work on like sort of a half mask. So if you want to say this one is a full mask or a cow one who's drying is a full mask um, because it covers your full face. The one that I just showed you that's a skeleton is a full mask face. This one is sort of a half mask. And you can see me, you can see my face, you can see my eyes, but you can also see the mask. Um, so I'm going to sort of make this one a half mask as well. So let's start by cutting once again. Um, the first thing that I'm going to make sure is that I have a nice strap for the back of my mask. You don't have to use just the cereal box. You can do whatever you want on yours. Maybe yours also has hole punched and an elastic strap. But for me and my little challenge of just using a box and glue, I wanted to use um, some of the cereal box as the strap that goes around my head. So for that, I just want to make sure that I'm cutting a strap off of the box like this. And I'm gonna set it to the side and that's gonna be my strap for later. But I just wanted to get that out of the way because I don't wanna cut everything else out and realize, oh no, I didn't leave this for me. So as you can see, this pretty much will cover my head. If you have a larger head or you want a large strap, just cut a second one of these and you can pop a little bit of glue or tape in the middle and have a super long strap. Setting that to the side, I'm not touching it. So now I have this. Um, I think first I'm going to start out with a vague looking shape. So I'm going to cut out a mask here. I've got a mask 
coming along. I'm going to round out these edges here. I don't typically like hard edges in my artwork, personal preference. Great. I have a nose. Maybe you have a nose too. Let's cut out a, something, a hole, so that this can sit nicely and my nose doesn't hit it. For that, I just cut a slit up the top and I'm cutting a line, I'm cutting a line. I'm sort of testing it too small. I'm cutting a little bit bigger. I'm rounding the top here. Oh yeah, that's that's feeling much better. Maybe make it a little bit bigger and then I'll be good to move on to the next step. So as you can see, I'm just cutting, trying on, cutting more. So do the same. You will make one of these and then you might have a better sense of masks for the future. If I was really planning this out well, I would have used this and I would have traced this onto this. But I'm showing you how to go from the beginning. Once you sort of get a feel though, you can save a pattern piece. And this is one if you were using scrap paper, you might do this on a scrap paper first, trace out your features. And then if you save that scrap paper, you can use that for any mask you make in the future. So here we go. That looks great. This sort of bothers me down here. So I'm going to cut that off. Oh yeah, that feels great. Um, same thing goes for eyes. Of course, if I had already had my mask, I could trace it, but I don't. So I'm going to do the same thing I did for the cow, which is put it on my face, sort of figure out where my eyes are, hold that spot, take it down, and either use a marker to draw it, or in my case, I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife to cut it right out because I trust myself with this. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, depending on depending on what you are creating, I'm making something that has armored scales. If you are doing something with armored scales or feathers, you might want to save every single one of these little things because these might be very useful for you later. I saved all of these for my mask before and I was able to turn them into feathers. If that's not your thing, then just toss them or in this case, just put them to the side, keep them somewhere safe. I did want to use the eye though. I'm going to do the same thing I said before. I'm going to make a nice symmetrical looking eye. So I'm cutting this just with a little X-Acto knife. My hot glue is raring to go. Um, like I said before, if you have hot glue, it just will dry nice and fast. But if you have um, regular glue, it doesn't matter. It'll just take a little bit longer to dry. You just have to wait before you wear it. Um, but if you use a slower, like a glue that dries a little bit slower, then you'll have a little bit more time to decide where you want things. I had to think fast with hot glue. You have to make quick decisions. All right, I'm going to find my cap for this. And of course, we're trying it on. I guessed pretty well. No, I measured like this. Though I do really want the nose to go up a little bit higher. I think my nose would be a little bit more comfortable if it went up a little bit like this. If you're following along with this mask instead, I equally want to see that one. So once again, this is sort of bothering me. I don't like when it digs into my mouth like this. So I'll cut it. And I'll cut this side. You can use this base piece to sort of work with whatever texture you're doing. So on the bird one, oh, those feathers are beautiful. My base piece has jagged texture up top. I cut that in there to emulate the base feathers. For this one, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to leave it this. <sighs> Too much stuff around me. <sighs> I'm almost dropping things. Um, for this, I'll show you the pattern piece that I made for the nose. So this is what the nose looks like if it was flat. Um, this is when you might want to use a little bit of patterning. Where did my pattern piece go? Here it is. So this is a piece of cardboard that I used. You can see that when I fold it down the center and I connect these two pieces, it creates a beak shape or a nose. This could be really any nose. 
Um, so on this, that's exactly what that is. So this is when I might recommend using a little bit of scrap paper and going from there. The animal that I'm making is sort of a scaly anteater. So he might have a little bit longer of a nose that does not curve down as dramatically as the bird beak did. As dramatically as my fruity pebble phoenix. Maybe that's what type of bird it is. Fruity pebble falcon, that sounds better. So let's draw a test piece out. You can draw it out. Um, I wish I could give you a better lesson for how to start this, but the best way to learn is to play and test. So I have this. I cut two slits. I cut two more slits on the other side. And I fold a little bit. And I tape. When the tape gets there, it is. I fold and I tape. And I fold this side and I tape this side. And I can sort of look at this curve and go, ooh, that's a nice curve. I think that's going to be really great for a snout. So I didn't even test the other side. I just tested one side. But you could do both sides, see how that looks. That's pretty cute. I like that. If you were going to turn this into a pattern, you would cut up to where it becomes open like that. And same for here. You can see the difference. If you were creating a puppet out of foam, if you were cutting this from foam, you wouldn't add anything on the sides of this. You would cut it out exactly as it would. And when you glue the foam, you would glue it together like this. So I'm giving you like the basics of foam patterning here. So that would go pop like that. On paper, I will probably end up cutting just a little bit more on each one of these so that I can overlap them. See how when I overlap them, there's a little bit of, well, overlap, a little bit of overlap with the paper. So if you were really bothered by the overlap, you could cut it to scale like this. You could pop them together like this. And you could actually use a second piece of paper. Let's say maybe a tiny little, little scrap like this. And you could pop them together like this, put a piece of glue on both sides of this, and glue it like that, like a little band-aid. If you didn't like the overlap, that's what you could do. It does not bother me. I will continue to use overlap on these paper patterns. Not on foam. Foam's a different game. But let's talk about paper for now. So I've got my nose pattern. Of course, I want my nose to be kind of symmetrical. So I know that if I use half of this and I mirror it, I can get a beautiful looking nose. Let's go. Cut it out. Oh no, this is a pretty in-depth, I think this might be one of the more detailed uh, puppet activities that I've done. But it's okay. I trust that everybody can follow along with me, depending on when you do it. Maybe you're doing it in the future. Maybe you're doing it right now with me. I'm excited to see what you create. I'm really excited um, if you are able to create a full mask or even just a full puppet with nothing but a box of cereal or another box of snacks. Please share it with me. I would be really curious to see that. This is kind of a fun Earth Day craft too because it's like, Oh yeah, this is recycled materials, you know. There we go. That nose looks excellent. I will now use my hot glue. Maggie, who taught the sock puppet workshop, had a really good point that I actually follow with my work as well, which is that if you're using hot glue, so you have a little cup of water next to you, a little cup of cool water. If you burn yourself, put your hands in there. It'll feel better. <laughs> Not 100%, but it'll help. If you have a, a hot glue gun with two settings for a low or high heat, set it to low heat. You don't need anything. You don't need magma to put this together. I'm using a nice low heat craft hot glue gun. Um, 
And I've just put the hot glue, as you can see, on both sides. And I'm folding it like this. And you can see that as I'm folding it, it's actually naturally folding to create the shape. This has become an elephant nose. So I might, might not use this one, but I'm happy that I showed you how to do this. I do really like when I can use recycled materials. Feels like, I don't know. It, it's kind of exciting. I really like the idea that a product can have one life doing something and then a totally different life doing something else. So this had a life carrying delicious cereal and now it has a life being a mask. So it's kind of neat. This is an elephant. Can I change my, I think I might do an elephant. This is week two of me doing an elephant. I love it. It's too good. Set it to the side. We'll think about it later. All right, my scissors. So at this point, yeah, let's do an elephant. I don't want to make another nose. <laughs> I'm assessing my time. I already knew this was going to be a hefty workshop. So for this, gluing this to this, you kind of have to do a little bit of fancy hot glue footwork. Um, if you were not using hot glue, I might recommend either using a piece of scrap paper or cardstock or another piece of your box. I might recommend you gluing tabs on the inside like this, folding the tab, and then you glue the tab down like this. That's probably what I would recommend if you were using just regular white glue. I have hot glue so I can defy gravity a little bit. When I'm using this hot glue, I'm going to draw it around the silhouette of where I want it to go. I guess the shape of where I want it to go. And I'm just tracing around. Boom. So as you can see, it sort of goes around the arch of my nose. And then I'm going to keep my hands away from the area that's going to touch the hot glue because I don't want to get burned. I've been burned before. I don't want to get burned. Um, I'm going to delicately place this on top. So this is a little bit of an advanced technique and I'm pinching this to make sure that it goes where I want it to go. And I'm holding it. I can feel the heat if I put my hand against this side. I'm not touching the heat. I'm just sort of feeling there. And I'm letting it cool because it's hot and it cools so quickly. There it is. So that looks pretty great. I like that. If at any point you're going, oh, I don't like what I did. I cut it too much. Oh no, it looks like an elephant and I really wanted an anteater. We have the tools to fix this. Let's use our scissors. We can pop open the seam that we just made, which I will do. I'm also gonna cut the nose a little bit shorter because I kind of want a shorter nose. Putting it on, I'm realizing, oh no, it's too much. That's okay, we can fix this. Pop that seam open like this with the scissors. Pop that seam open on the other side as well. If you're using hot glue, you can just pull it or you can use scissors to just cut it down the middle like that. And kind of like I showed you before, like if you were trying to not have these overlap at all, you would put something underneath them. You actually could cut a piece like this and do the same thing to open up the uh, dart that you've created a little bit. So I've just cut a little, little piece. I'm gonna put a blob of glue on one side, gently hold the middle, put a blob of glue on the other side. And I'm going to put one on each side and I'm sort of going to figure out what angle I'd like it to be at. So to me, this looks way better. Um, I'm also going to taper the nose a little bit so that the edge of the nose is a little bit uh, thinner than the base of the nose, a little thicker. And I'm going to create sort of a more anteater like shape because I said I would make an anteater. Said I was going to make a pangolin. We're going to stick to that. Hope my classmates remember that they gave me that idea because I'm sticking to it. So I'm doing the other thing on the other side, sort of creating a better curve. 
but I like a little bit more. Love it. And I'm going to trim down the nose like I said I would. Puppets as I'm making them, I'm sort of figuring out along the way with these ones, and that's okay. It's okay to not have a 100% plan, or it's okay to not know your plan, figure out your plan, and then remake it now that you know the plan. You can do what you need. Don't forget to try it on every step. Figure out that it looks okay. I like it. Um, you can use different parts to build up different things. This goes like there. Sort of the thing my bird has, right? Down, over. I want to create sort of a natural bridge. So I can use one of these. Once again, just layering cardboard. You can layer cardboard all day and have a really interesting texture by the time you're done. I've just put a little bit of hot glue on each side. And I'm going to put one side down on the nose. And I'm going to put one side up here. So that it sort of looks like this. So you can see a silhouette that I kind of like a little bit more now. I'm going to fill in the edges of that with another piece of cardboard, similar to what I did with her. See? Once you kind of start figuring out your paper techniques, you can put them into any masks that you'd like. So love what I'm doing here. Oh no, the edges are coming up. It's okay. We have scissors. We can round it out. All right. We can fill in those gaps, and I'll do that really quickly with just another piece of cardboard. Holding it up and going this. Once again, hot glue is helping me to apply gravity a little bit. I'm putting it on, and then placing it down like this. Great. I feel super good about this. I would love to move on to our final steps here. It's up to you whether you want to add ears to this. Technically, this is just the face. So maybe if I was creating this character, maybe my ears would be up here on a headband. If this was just one sculptural mask piece, maybe the ears would be up here. I kind of like the idea of the ears being on the mask today. So let's go with that. I'm grabbing my cereal box. Haven't strayed from it. We've stayed all within the cereal box so far. Pretty excited. I'm going to cut some little ears and I'm going to mirror it because once again I kind of love when you're able to see the texture or the pattern of the box that it originally was. Love that. So now each side has a little bit of a Reese's. I don't remember what I did before where I just slid up here and I slid right here and when I fold it I've got an adorable little ear. I love it. Um, you can really figure out, see how the shape of that changes from just me pushing it in further far apart. So you can decide sort of the angle that you'd like your ears to be at. Maybe they're really curled up like this, or maybe they're a little bit lazier. Let's, you can figure out whichever you'd like. Once again, I'm just putting a piece of hot glue right there, and I'm covering it like that. Love it. Let's do that again on this side. Figuring out the same one. Holding it there. And going over like that. Love it. I love when the logo is huge and you can only see a little bit of it. Like, just kind of gives you the hint of, is that Reese's? Love it. For this, I'm going to put some glue around the edge right here. And I'm going to place that on my other ear here, or on my head. Oh, so cute. I love it. All right, let's do that on the other side. I love when you're creating a puppet and you already can tell that you love it. You already know that it's going to be an incredible piece. Sometimes you're making a puppet and you go, I don't know, I hope it's good. This is good. This is a good mask. You might notice I've been referring to this occasionally as a mask, occasionally as a puppet. We actually do consider masks puppets at the Ballard Institute and at the University of Connecticut. And also in my life, I consider masks puppets. I know it's a little tough, right? 
we think of a puppet as something that you can control. However, a mask, and I guess the definition of puppet that I like to use is any inanimate object that you can give life through performance. So this is an inanimate object. When I put it on and I become alive and I become the character, not only am I the full puppet, but this inanimate object is now animated and has come to life. So it's pretty exciting. So that's how things like object performance fall under puppetry as well. So sort of giving inanimate objects like this puppetry. I know it super opens up the definition to think about masks as puppetry. Um, I'm gonna go over now how I do a little bit of texture on this mask, like this one, because I think that this texture is really beautiful. I obviously don't think I'm gonna have enough time to go over the entire mask, but let me just pick a portion of it to armor and I can show you how that's done in case you wanna do that on your own mask. So this works really well if you're doing something with scales, if you're doing something with armored plates, if you're doing something with feathers, even if you're doing something with fur, this could be a really good fuzzy texture for something with a lot of fur. So let's prepare our piece. We also, at any point, you can take your, um, and maybe actually we'll do this right now so that those who don't want to do texture can follow along with this step. I'm cutting off the little like fringes here and I'll, I don't really want them on my mask. I want to use them for other things. Anybody need box tops? I've got box tops. I'm gonna pop a little bit of glue on one side here. I'm gonna pop that right there. So when I'm making this, I'm making sure that all of my pattern, this pattern is facing outward because that's the color I'm using. You could do the opposite and just have the brown side facing out. And then this would be a great canvas to put marker, colored pencil, crayons, more watercolor got left over from your first mask. This would be a really great way to color any mask you want. Paint. So this one you do have to uh, fit a little bit more. So I'm putting this on here. Sort of hold it with your finger. Make sure it slides on and off nice and easily. My bird one's a little tight. This one's going to be nice and comfortable. And then make sure. I love this. I think this is a really cool project. Like I said, if you're creating along with me, whether you're creating along with me right now, whether you're creating along with me in the future, please post your picture on the Ballard Institute Facebook page. I really want to see all of your puppets. This looks great. And look, this is a mask. At this point, you've created a mask. So at this point, we've technically completed our challenge. We have created a mask with nothing but glue and a box. I do want to go over how to do some texture because I think a little texture is a little bit of fun. So for the, the animal I'm doing has armored plates. So let's think about what shape that is. On the bird, all of my feathers were little triangles like this or scales. Maybe you want to make a dragon to match your dragon marionette that I taught you how to make several weeks ago. This might be a really good scale texture too. Because I think that this is a really good shape for scales, is nice rounded edges. And I think that rounded edges will look really good. So let's cut out a few of those on this. Um, I sort of like this side here with this big spoon on it. And I'm going to cut some scales. And if you were doing, oh, something moved in the other room. I would say it was a ghost, but I live with a cat too. <laughs> so <laughs> I love living with a pet because I know it's not haunted. It's just the cat. If you were doing triangles for feathers, a really cool technique that I like to do is cut up and now cut down. And you can do that on your, on any rectangle you cut. And then you can actually have three different, instead of just cutting out like one at a time, now you have three different triangles just by cutting in a zigzag pattern along a rectangle. So you can get a lot of feathers cut really quickly. I would do the same, except I wanna do nice round ones. So I'm probably just gonna go like this 
and I'm just going to cut and put it in a pile. And I'm going to cut and put it in a pile. Wouldn't you know it? I just cut it and it's in the pile. You could plan this out a little bit better if you were going to use every single one of these little fuzzies. Not gonna. If you cut littler pieces, you need more to cover the whole mask. If you cut bigger pieces, you need less to co cover the mask. I think that using a mix of both small and big pieces, depending on where you're at on the face, is really effective. Um, you can look at something like this and see nice big feathers out here. And then up close, nice little short ones. If you have a pet at home, or you just like looking at pictures of animals on a computer or in a book, you can see that the way that animals have fur and scales and the way that they're, I don't know, that those things work on their face, it's usually a little bit shorter up here. It sort of gets longer and longer until it's nice out here. So look at real animals. Look at animals, look at pictures, look at your own pets whether they're birds or reptiles or mammals, look at your own everything around you and sort of take inspiration from that. I know that we're creating fantasy puppets. We're creating puppets that are obviously not real animals, but I think that it's uh, cool to look at reference and look at real animals and, and learn from that. Um, the reason that I make animal puppets really well is because I love looking at animals and I love looking at my own cat and going, oh, that's the way the fur goes. So I'm going to try to tilt down my computer a little bit. Let's make a prettier looking workspace for you to see, because I want to show you this process, but it tends to happen a little bit closer to me. Okay, so I've got my pile of scales ready, ready to go. I'm going to push these out of the way. Let's see if this works. All right. Looks like it works, right? Yeah. Okay. So I've got my puppet here. I can't really see the comments too well. I'll check back in a moment. I've got a scale here. What I think works really better, or works, oh my gosh, bad grammar. <laughs> what works the best, what works better is to put your texture that's going in the back on first and then layer it until it goes to the front. So for example, I'll glue this right there. I'll glue this one right here. And you can see how there's a little bit of a flat, really hard to see, a flat, flat there. That's when, if I had cut this in sort of a scalp pattern, it'd be a little bit easier to see. Checking my comments. Nobody said anything. Nobody has questions yet. If you have any questions, feel free to pop in and ask. So things like that. So now that I've done that, I think it's about time for a new glue stick too. Um, come on, blue stick. And then I'm able to layer like this. So see how that texture is already sort of coming out? I like this piece here. Kind of have these pebbles on it. So let's do this. And I'm putting it there. So you can already see how just by putting the back ones on first and then the front ones on and then I might even do that again. Let's pick another scale. Oops. So like this. So see how that texture is already appearing for just us layering small pieces? So that's what I would do for the entire thing. Yeah. Um, typically, I would probably go around two and do like everything that's on the outside first. So I would do this first layer and then I would do this first layer that goes around the ear and down to the cheeks. Remembering that everything is sort of coming out from this spot here. So like the scales here would be going to the side and these scales would be going kind of diagonal up. These ones going straight up. Scales on the nose would be going straight back. So doing something like that. So that is just how I would start the texture on this. You can see that exact texture here. Um, yes, <laughs> that's about what we'd be going to. I don't have time to finish it, but I will show you one more thing that I think is kind of useful. Um, 
if you really like the look of the way that I have outlined my eyes with white, I think that outlining the eyes especially helps them to pop. So for me, I really want to make sure that I outline my eyes. I've saved my eyepiece. I think it goes over here. No, the other side. I've saved my eyepiece here. So I can use this as a pattern piece. So what that means is that I can use this and I can trace or cut around this and sort of cut and know that if I want to follow, let's say I want to give them cat's eyes, like I've got cat's eye makeup. You could trace it or you can just cut right into it. You can sort of trace it and go, oh yeah, that's exactly what I want. And then either you could, um, I'm folding it and I'm cutting it and then I'm using this again. You could use a marker to draw and then cut it. Or if you're like me and you're teaching a workshop and you're slowly running out of time, maybe you just jump right into it. And then I would follow this again to make sure that I was um, cutting out at the same hole. There we go. Oops. Oh no, I cut it. That's okay. We have the power of glue and tape on our side. So using that, you could get a pretty nice pattern for your eyes or for other parts of the body. Just the eyes is what I was thinking about. So you can see how that already pops when we add that on there. Let's add a little bit of hot glue just because I love to see how that looks on me and show you the difference. There it is. Boom. Let's bring it back up to me. Welcome back. So you can see that this versus this side, our eye makeup, lash, whatever you want to call this marking, this is helping the eye really pop. So even if you see me from far away, you're seeing this side pops a lot more than this side sort of blends in. So use strategic things like that to your advantage. Things that are important like eyes, nose, special markings in a contrasting or a different color, help them to pop. And if the whole thing pops, nothing pops. If only a few things pop, then it sort of draws the viewer's eye to the things that might be the most important. So in this, it really draws you into the eye. And I think the same goes for this one. Um, before we completely pop off of uh, Facebook Live, before I leave, um, I do want to give just a few more little pointers, things to keep in mind for mask making in general and performing as a mask performer. Um, so mask supports are considered puppets. I'm kind of silly with this one, but I kind of love it. Um, masks, of course, fall under the puppetry uh, umbrella. Oops. So the difference being that when I have a puppet next to me, this is the puppet and this is me. When I am wearing a mask, I am a puppet and I'm also a performer. So doing things um, when you're moving, this kind of looks like jowls. Let's, let's cut these a little bit, a little bit slimmer. I don't want to be like a bulldog. Um, but when you're wearing this mask, think about the character that you are. Think about the character you are. And instead of just thinking about how to move your character and perform your character over here while you're here. You really have to think about how your whole body needs to move to accommodate the character that you're portraying. Um, oh, we got so much better. I love it. Um, so thinking about how your head motions and thinking about how your movements, because even though this is the thing that's turning you into a puppet and turning you into a different character, this is all attached to you. This is all part of the thing that you're doing. So even though the puppet is here, using your whole body to sort of convey the character that you're becoming and performing. Um, so thinking about not just, um, not just like walking regular and then doing something, but thinking about how would this character walk? Thinking about, I like to think about in a scene what my character's motivations are. I'm an anteater, it's lunchtime. I'm looking for food. So what does that mean? Does it mean I'm sort of walking and scanning the ground and I'm looking around, things like that. Um, and keeping those things in mind, I think can really help bring your character to life when you're performing and playing as them. 
um, and also creates sort of more believable character because you're not just going, oh, that's a person in a mask. You're going, oh, that's that's an anteater thinking about something. Um, so just things to keep in mind. So if you're performing and playing as these puppets, thinking about what the character's doing and how their whole body moves. Do they move really slow? Are they sort of fast moving? I think mine's sort of a slow moving. This is as much as I can do in this box. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not on my feet, but thinking about does your puppet move? Puppet, does your own body get to move? Do your steps, are you taking really big steps on your feet? Are you taking little tiny steps? Thinking about things like that. Um, so that's sort of the base of mask performance. Obviously, there is a lot more there um, than just what I gave you in the last five minutes. But just a few things to keep in mind as you're performing this character, as you're performing and creating more. And especially if you have more than one mask that you've created, thinking about how they move differently from each other. Obviously, our fruity pebble falcon is going to move way differently than our slow and hungry anteater. So just a few things to keep in mind. With that, though, I think I have... I wouldn't say overstayed my welcome, but I think I've certainly uh, given you enough to think about and given you enough to do with two full masks. <sighs> um, thank you very much for joining me today. Of course, my name once again is Abby. I do tours and workshops at the Ballard Institute and Museum of Puppetry, and I'm so excited to get to share two masks with you today. I hope you will take these uh, lessons these are all little lessons, little paper folding, layering, things like that are little lessons that you can put towards any project that you're working on with these same materials. So let it help you in the future. I hope you make a lot of really cool projects. If you, if you have made a mask alongside with me today or any time that you're watching this, please share it with me. Please share it on the Dallas Institute and Museum of Puppetry's Facebook page and I will see it because I love to look at the comments and I love to see what things people have made. Um, I love seeing everybody's marionettes and rod puppets. Um, I love seeing everybody's uh, hand puppets from last week. I didn't even leave the workshop and I love seeing everybody's sock puppets. Um, so if you've made a mask alongside with me today, please feel free to share it in the comments and I will probably give it a like and it will make me go, oh my God. Yes, people are making these and having fun. Um, even better yet, if you put these on and play with them and you figure out a character, share that with somebody. Share that with somebody else that you're making this puppet with. If you're making this puppet with somebody else, maybe you both make separate characters and they interact with each other and they get to meet for the first time and it's really exciting. Um, happy Earth Day to everybody. Of course, if you've made a puppet today, it's also your puppet's birthday. <laughs> your puppet is 49 years younger than Earth Day, so. I guess 50 years younger. Your puppet is zero today. It was just one. So thanks for joining me today. I hope that you share these with me when you make them. Um, and please join us again. We have another exciting workshop coming up for you this Friday. Tracy is coming back. Tracy will be doing this Friday, 2 p.m., same place, same time. That is uh, 2 o'clock Eastern. Tracy will be doing a stop motion workshop. So. I'm a little excited. I've never done stop motion before. I can't wait to join um, and learn how to do some stop motion. So check that out if you're interested. Thanks for making masks with me. I'm going to go paint the rest of my cow mask. Thanks for joining me and have an excellent rest of your Wednesday and a very happy Earth Day and whatever else you got going on. Thank you very much.